where are your kids? No comment. No comment? They've been missing for four months. You have nothing to say? You're over here in Hawaii? Where are your children? Yeah, why don't you just give us a comment? Just tell us where they are. Chad, where are Lori's kids? What happened to Tammy, Chad? Can you tell us what happened to Tammy? Why have you guys been in Hawaii for so long? That was the newlywed couple, Chad and Lori Daybell, back in January of 2020. The remains of Lori's two children, JJ and Ty Lee, would be found in June of that year, buried on Chad Daybell's property. And now, more than three years later, jury selection is underway in Lori's trial. Karen Lear with our great affiliate, KIVI, was at the courthouse today and has more for us tonight. When you start jury selection for a case of this magnitude, there's no telling how long it will take. We saw three groups of 15 questioned on the first day and only 17 moved forward from the first two groups, zero from the third group. Today, only five moving forward from the first group as things are moving a little slower than expected and questioning is still underway. We're one day closer to opening arguments in the trial for Lori Vallow Daybell. Jury selection still underway. Similar to day one, several potential jurors quickly dismissed Tuesday due to undue hardship, essentially saying the eight-week time commitment of reporting to the courthouse would cause a personal burden, in most cases financially. Different on Tuesday, the opportunity for media and the public present at the courthouse to listen in to individual voir dire, particularly questioning about pretrial publicity. Both sides wanting to know what each juror knows already about the defendant from news reports, the internet, and documentaries on the case. The high-profile Idaho case drawing people like Melanie Johnson to the courthouse to watch the process unfold. She plans to be here every day. Well, the kids' grandparents really touched me. You know, they didn't know what had happened. They were begging, please tell us where the kids are. And there were no answers. I still don't know the answers, so that's why I'm here. The individuals questioned, warned to expect emotional testimony and evidence, including autopsy photos involving the deaths of two children and a mother of five. Tuesday's goal, get through three groups of 15 and one day closer to a pool of 42 potential jurors before peremptory strikes narrow things down to the final 18. Now, another logistical note from today as far as the commitment being asked of these jurors, the state and judge boys mentioning that there is still a possibility the final jurors on this case could be sequestered, meaning they would be isolated from friends and family for the duration of the trial. Reporting in Ada County, Idaho, I'm Karen Lair. Back to you. And Chad and Lori's cases were severed earlier this year, you'll remember. And while all eyes are on Lori in that courtroom, we're going to turn our attention to Chad. Court TV anchor Ted Rowlands has more on the life of the so-called doomsday prophet. Chad Daybell grew up in the LDS Church in Springfield, Utah. And according to Chad, in his teens, he became sort of a prophet. The way he described it was that his veil was more open than it had been. Daybell met his first wife, Tammy Douglas, while in college. He was a part-time grave digger. During their marriage, they would have five children. The couple also founded a book company through which Chad published many religious books. I've recently released my autobiography entitled Living on the Edge of Heaven, where I tell more about my two near-death experiences. Chad Daybell claimed he had visions of the future and heard a voice that guided him. He told followers he knew the end of the world was coming and that evil zombies were taking over some people's bodies. Chad's been a very prolific author, so in the past I would say a lot of his publications are very much in the mainstream, but it does seem that, that, that their trajectory seems to be taking them away from the, the kind of center where most people in the faith would have. Chad would meet Lori Vallow in 2018. They had an affair, and she became a dedicated follower of his cult-like group. The next year, Chad's wife Tammy died in her sleep. I begged her to go to the doctor, and she just... Her heart was failing her. She was physically falling apart. Chad is now charged with Tammy's murder. Two weeks after her death on November 5th, 2019, he and Lori were married. Hi, Dad. 
Within seven months, Chad and Lori Daybell would both be jailed for the murders of her children and his wife. The remains of Lori's daughter, Tylee, and son, JJ, were found in Chad's backyard. On behalf of Mr. Daybell, we will enter a plea of not guilty to all of the charges. All right, joining us now from Idaho Falls, Idaho, the managing editor of EastIdahoNews.com, Nate Sunderland. Nate, great to see you. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. Truly appreciate it. I know you were in that courtroom and you're following this very closely. So I want to start off by just getting a sense of your impressions of jury selection, how it's going so far, what some of the problems might be that you're seeing. You know, I don't want to disagree too much with Karen, but we're actually... Um we're actually surprised. We think it's actually going faster than we were expecting. Uh, the judge is taking very short breaks, short lunches. He's getting the jurors in and out. And I, we were expecting opening arguments next week, but I, I think we'll get them by Thursday. All right. So basically, I mean, right now, it sounds like based on her numbers, there were 17 chosen yesterday. At the time of her report, five chosen today. That's 20, what, 22? Um, I know they want 40 or so. Um, so we're more selected today. What makes you think after the first two days, they've got 20 or so. You think in a couple of days they should be finished up and get that group of 40 that'll take them into that next step? Yes. They, there was, at the end of the day today, there was 30. They hit 30. And I think they'll get uh, to their 42 number tomorrow. And then they'll start kind of whittling it down. Um, so we can get those 18, the 12 regulars and the six alternate jurors. Um, you know, they're asking some interesting questions of the jurors. A lot of focus has been on religion. Um, and a lot is focused on uh, media coverage. Uh, like the, the video that you're showing now, they've asked directly, have you seen this video? And have you heard of this interview? Um, just to see if these people can be unbiased as jurors. Now, again, at the end of the day, in jury selection, you're trying to find jurors who um, can be unbiased, who can say, yes, hey, I, I've heard of this case. You're not going to find many that haven't. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm sure there haven't been many so far who said they haven't heard about the case. But the idea is to find those who can be unbiased. Are you detecting, I mean, it sounds like they're not having that much trouble finding a group of jurors or potential jurors who said they can be unbiased in this situation. No, and, and that actually surprised us a little bit. You know, when we've been on the street in Boise uh, talking to people, a lot of people know about this, but um, there's been a good number of the jurors that are there that really don't know anything about the case. And that surprised us a little bit because uh, it has been such a well-publicized case in Idaho and even around the country. Now, something else that Karen talked about was the fact that the judge was mentioning there's still a possibility that this jury could be sequestered. We've already sort of argued that in motions. The judge decided not to sequester. Part of the reason, if I remember correctly in his ruling, was that that would make it even harder to find a jury. Um, but did he mention something about possible sequestration today? Or is he mentioning that to the jury? Um, you know, I, I don't recall him mentioning that today, uh, but I know that that is something that has been talked about uh, repeatedly uh, throughout this whole process, and I, I still think it's a possibility. All right, so now, we, you, we saw we did a little background there on Chad, right? Um, I want to pick your brain a little bit about him and, and, and his thoughts. I mean, we've talked a little bit about this before. This is a couple that they believe they could see dark spirits. Um, they went so far as to talk about zombies. Um, and my understanding is that his philosophy sort of evolved and, and Lori picked it up. Is that the sense you get from this relationship that she came into this relationship and sort of picked up on some of his theories, some of his ideas, some of his prophecies? Yes, I think so. But there was, there was an interest there before she met Chad. Um, I mean, we know that they met uh, at some religious conferences uh, and that they, uh, they did a, a podcast together uh, to kind of compare beliefs, and she was really smitten with him. But she seemed to already be on that religious path, and I, I think she heard someone who sounded, he had a message that sounded like where she was already going. And I think she just grabbed onto that and got behind it 150 percent 
All right. Um, so. Because, yeah, she, she hook, line, and sinker. 